Hi, everybody. This is your old pal, Uncle Hondo from Sports Illustrated. Uh, from Sports Illustrated, I'm your Las Vegas Raiders beat writer. It is great to be with you. Welcome to the Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. Super appreciate all of you. It's great to be with you. I want to do a couple of things of housekeeping real quick. Number one, uh, this is super early in the morning on Saturday. I don't even know what time it is. I think it's probably somewhere around three. Um, uh, I told you that I was going to be in Orlando uh, today for the owners meeting that start tomorrow. I'm not had a little bit of a plane issue. So I'm actually flying out as soon as I'm done taping this. I just didn't want you to, cause I told you I was going to be here. Didn't want you to think I was, and I'm not, but I'll be there um, this morning ready for the owners meetings on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Um, going to have some great stuff from there um, for you, uh, bringing you great stuff from Tampa. Now I want to address one other quick issue. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday on the podcast, but I want to mention it again. <clears throat> I am so proud of the company that I work for, and I'm grateful. And God has really blessed me with a tremendous job and, more importantly, tremendous bosses and great people. And I work with some of the best in the world and super excited about some things that are coming that are even going to help us offer you very much more extended coverage behind the scenes so like when you go to a website that's the front of the house like the doors and the shutters and the siding in the back they're adding a bunch of new stuff so we we usually do 10 12 articles a day you're not seeing that right now for a second i think that's going to change later today you'll start seeing us going back to the normal quantity but for the next several weeks we're going to be adding a bunch of features and i appreciate just i'm giving you that heads up as a courtesy to let you know what's coming. I mean, we're going to be able now to show you highlights. So if we're writing about a college kid, we can go find a highlight and show you a highlight. If we're writing about a Raider play or something that happened, we can show you all those highlights right there. Just a bunch of, and that's just one of a multiplicity of new things coming and happening. So I'm very excited about this. I hope that you are as well. And uh, it's going to be phenomenal. So I'm very, very excited about it. I just wanted you to be up to um, knowing what's going on. But nothing's changed. In fact, our, our, our work is going to be completely enhanced. And we're going to even make your experience better. Um, what a privilege to work for a great company, great bosses, and to really, you're my ultimate bosses, <clears throat> Raider Nation, and you guys are just the absolute best. And I just want you to know, I appreciate you. I'm grateful for you. We are growing. We are booming um, bigger than we've ever been. And it is all directly related to you guys and gals. So I'm thankful. Remember, you can follow me on IG when you go to Hondo SR. And you can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, when you go to at Hondo Carpenter. So get these done today. And then I'm going to get to Orlando. Looking forward to being there. I'm um, looking forward to doing the podcast from there, bringing you inside information. Um, it's going to be great and bringing you the best coverage that we can of your Raiders. Now, when you guys email me, a couple things I need to tell you. Uh, some of you just flood. And I need to tell you, if, if, if you do that, your email gets blocked as spam. So I'm asking you to be very courteous and careful. I don't want your emails to get spam. Somebody sent me a message yesterday and said, um, I, don't, I don't know if they said it on social media or how we got it, but they basically said, you know, I've sent you all these emails. You never read them. Well, first of all, there's no guarantee that we'll read it. Number one. Number two, you got to have a name and, you know, it can't be Raider Lieutenant. You got to have a name. And then second of all, if you send a bunch, it just goes to spam <clears throat> because of the voluminous amount of email we get. Um, it has to help us. So multiples go get spammed. So please be careful of that. I don't want you to get spammed. Um, another thing is, is, you know, people will send me questions via Twitter because I like to follow fans who I think are interesting, funny, interesting. I follow people who agree with me, follow people who don't agree with me. I followed someone the other day who disagreed with me, but they made a very salient point. And uh, I like the way they did it. So I followed. Problem is when you follow people, 
then you get voluminous amount of DMs. <clears throat> we do not take questions over DMs. Matter of fact, DMs we hardly ever really watch um, just because there's so many. That's why a lot of media don't follow people. But I want to follow. I want to hear what people are thinking. But DMing me is nowhere even close to a guarantee you're going to hear back. Just It's just too many voices coming in. And I have to be able to balance everything. Um, so just like, you know, I'm one of the few member, members of the media that will accept friend requests on Facebook. I mean, I'm at my maximum 5,000, but I will accept them. And from time to time, somebody will drop off. And so we just accept the next one. But on Facebook, I'm not there to talk Raiders. I'm there to talk about my kids. I'm there to talk about whatever. So people will send me stuff on Facebook. We're like, listen, this is not what we use this for. So I'm just giving you that so people understand that some places in your life and you have to have boundaries and where things are. Emails are great. Just don't spam it. And I follow on Twitter because I want to hear from you, but DMs are not really the best way to get a hold of me because I, I look at them very rarely. So I'm just kind of trying to help you have the parameters because I want to hear from you. Um, I love hearing from you guys. And if you send an email that says question and it's all opinion, be specific in the subject line of what you're saying. If it's a question, then put Raiders Q&A. So if you have a question or answer that's something that you'd like talked about, it's Spartan Nation Mail, M-A-I-L, at yahoo.com. Just put in the subject line, Raiders Q&A. And uh, if it's a comment, you can just put in their comment, whatever. But love to hear from you. Thank you all for doing it. <clears throat> Let's get going. We got a bunch of them today. Oh, hang on. My alarm's going off and I have no idea why. So let's turn that off and let's get right to it. So the first email we're going to answer today comes to us from Todd S. Todd S. Hondo, if the Raiders aren't able to acquire a true number one at corner, do you or the Raiders believe that Jack Jones has the ability to ascend into being that true number one? Yes. I, I I think he's demonstrated that. That surprises me a little bit, Todd, that you don't think he's demonstrated it. And um, do I think he is a complete CB1 today? No. But the guy should have, I mean, they legitimately had a case for the Pro Bowl, the way he played in a few short games for the Raiders. Um. Yeah, I think him and – I mean, Nate Hobbs is the best slot. Year one um, – and I've been asked to be nice. So, year one under the previous coach, they tried to move him to the outside because some people just think they're geniuses. Let's reinvent the wheel. Let's ask somebody to be what they're not. How many know Max Crosby's a great defensive end? Great. Let's just play him at quarterback because he's a great defensive end. Anyways, people move on. They put him back on the slot last year. Nate Hobbs is one of the best in the slot. He's a superstar. He's a superstar in the making. He's a guy that you're going to have to keep your eye on for long-term deal. Koontz, Dylan Parham. Jack Jones, whatever. A lot of great young stars in this team. Anyways, so yeah, they believe it, but yet they would still like to add a CB1. They'd still like to. I think Terry and Arnold would be a great addition to the Raiders. Great addition. Going back to my first mock draft, had the Raiders taking him number one. Um, I like him a lot. And uh, he'd be a great addition. But yes, they think certainly Jack can play that. <clears throat> but he also... If he's not your CB1, there's a few things you can have him do uh, that really play even more to his skill set. But, yeah, there's a lot of confidence in Raider Nation when it comes to Jack Jones, both me personally and I know the Raiders too as well. Thanks for that, Todd. Next one comes us from Paul Camello. Hello, Hondo. I love your work on all platforms. Well, thank you. That's kind. I would love your opinion on who fits the Raiders' new offensive system better, Bo or Penix. Thanks for the great content, Paul. Hmm. So 
let me say this. <clears throat> they both are different. I think they both could fit. Um, I am higher on Michael Penix than I am Bo Nix, but I'm not against Bo Nix. So let me explain what I mean. Michael Penix is, if he did not have his injury history, would be considered much higher in the draft. He's a smooth passer. Um, okay, he, he does a lot right, a lot right. But multiple injuries just preclude you from picking him in the first round. Somebody's going to, but it's like these general managers and executives I talk to who are very successful. They'll tell you, you may hit on one of those, but for everyone you hit on, there's seven or eight that you don't. And everyone wants to focus on the one, but the good teams understand I can't hit every seventh or eighth on a first round pick. It needs to be every seven of eight I hit on. So again, big a big appreciation for Penix. No shame in that guy's game. Now, Bo Nix, another great kid. Another great kid. Um, I heard that some people were probably not a big fan of, of some interviews at the Combine, but I've heard some that thought he was fine. That's a little interesting to me. Not as in character stuff, just, just how it went. Um, <clears throat> also, Bo is really good um, on short passes, extremely good. The statistics are through the roof. If you look at yak, you know, yards after the catch, get the ball out quick to somebody and then let them go create. Um, but I know that there are several people that are concerned with Bo Nix's ability with getting the ball downfield. It's not just the ability to throw the ball. I remember somebody once talking about, oh, Jamarcus Russell standing flat-footed through at 70 yards. Okay, that's great. But you got a ring. Picture like a halo. And you got to put that ball in an 18-inch window or where a defensive back can't get it. The ability to just throw the ball that far, ooh, okay? That's not the ooh factor. The ooh factor is the ability to throw that ball and throw it accurately. If it's a 50-50 ball and you're going up against a ball hog, a Jalen Ramsey, that means half of them are going to be intercepted. That's not good. It's not good. It's like saying, oh, man, my buddy, he's a real shark. He went to the casino and bet a million bucks. Okay, but if he stole the money, again, don't fall in love this is what happens and, and fans have every right but there are some teams that are bad drafters that do this too they want to win the press conference okay so let's look at Bo Nix great kid no issues with character great kid he is probably the best short passer in the draft no argument can he get the ball down the field yes but he does but when you have superior uh, wide receivers who are getting five yards of separation or four yards of separation, it doesn't matter. You've got a three or four foot halo to throw the ball into. But when you go up against great competition and that halo now becomes 12 to 18 inches and in where you have to put it, it's just not heaving the ball. There's a lot of concerns with Knicks. It's a senior bowl against some better competition when in those routes didn't necessarily go well. So do I think both men could have a big future in the National Football League? Yes. Do I think both men could develop into good quarterbacks in the National Football League? Absolutely. Do I think that talking to the best teams at drafting quarterbacks, any of them would select them in round one? No. Again, with Knicks, it's developmental. With Penix, it's health. And you've got to get your first-round guys to hit. I mean, look at the Raiders. Okay, they hit with Colton. But by the way, there was a lot of people that 
said he was a bust after year one. Just remember that. But look at all the misses. Okay, Josh Jacobs was a hit. But still, he didn't stick around because of injury, which we didn't know that at Alabama. So that's nothing they could have planned from. Henry Ruggs was a great draft pick. Nobody, there was no signs that Henry Ruggs was going to do what he did. Okay, so we're going to give them, there are three really good first round picks, but there was a lot. I mean, Damon Arnett will go down in my book as the dumbest pick in the history of the National Football League. With Jamarcus Russell, it was not a great pick. There was a lot of concerns there, a lot of red flags. But you can at least, if you stretch and pretend a little bit, you can kind of see what Al Davis saw. Damon Arnett, there were teams that weren't even going to take him as a UDFA, an, under, under, un, an undrafted free agent. Everyone who, and I covered the Big Ten at the time, <clears throat> knew all of the character issues around Damon Arnett. It was just a pure, arrogant, stupid pick. And I said that at the time. Stupid pick. It was a throwaway, dumb pick. There was no reason. I, did he have some natural talent? Yes. But all of the red flags were so bad. They were red. They were not red flags. They were roadblocks. Okay. The Raiders got to get back to where they're hitting, to where those picks are making things happen, to where those picks are succeeding. And again, I mentioned this. I won't mention it again. A lot of people mention Penix and say, so why was Tyree a great pick? Because it was a one-part injury. And now he's going to be healthy next year. And, oh, by the way, he was even showing flashes when he wasn't 100% at the end of last year. He's going to be fine. So, again, uh, though that's the analysis of Penix. So which one do I think? If I had to pick one, I would go with Michael Penix. Because his issue is a health issue. Bo's is a development issue. Now, they may interview Bo and say, yep, this is, an, this is a developmental issue, but, man, we really like his attitude. We really think this is going to be easy to fix. Maybe they do a visit with him. So it's not me saying I don't like Bo Nix. I'm telling you what the NFL people believe. And if you don't like that, that's fine. I'm good with that. But I'm just telling you what they believe and the people I respect and how it comes down. So if I had to pick one or the other, I would probably, and again, we're not talking first round. Um, I don't know. I I and I'm and I my opinion is irrelevant. Um, I would just say the people who are the best drafters um, have Penix higher, but it doesn't mean that they have taken Bo off the board. So there you go. I'm not trying to be evasive, nor am I trying to be political. Um, I've talked to Michael, so I, I know what I think of him. I do know people who know Bo. I have not talked to him who rave about his character. But just on the little that I would know, I would probably go Penix, but that doesn't mean that I think Bo would be a failure. Um, I think it would be a terrible first round pick just based on the risks. And again, <clears throat> if the Raiders, like Daniel Jeremiah of NFL Network, I think I think it was Daniel, recently had the Raiders taken Penix. Okay, I'm not rooting against the kid. He's a great kid. I hope. I don't root against any kid. I want all kids to get well. I wanted Damon Arnett to get to do well, to turn his life around. That said, um, I think any of them is a risk in the first round, but I certainly hope it works out. I hope it works out great. Remember, for every eight risks, one may work out. You want to pick every seven workout of the eight by being more selective and careful in your first round drafting. Okay, next one comes to us from Tim K in Syracuse, New York. Uncle Hondo, I would like you to put on your conspiracy aluminum foil hat for a moment and follow me here. Hold me. Have my back, everybody. Here we go. We're diving in. We all know Jim Harbaugh's fondness for J.J. McCarthy. We also know that the Chargers are in cap heck. Harbaugh could reach out uh, 
to one of the top teams and offer up Herbert for their pick and get J.J. McCarthy? He could. He could. No doubt about it. I'm also going to tell you that part of Jim wanting the job with the Chargers is he loved Justin Herbert. So I'm I'm not the right one to ask. I am I watched I watched Herbert play a couple times in person in college and was not impressed. I've not been impressed with him for the hoop and the hoop law. I mean, I remember last year being in La La Land and watching Aiden O'Connell with no help from Josh McDaniels. In my opinion, I'll play him. I do not mean this disrespectfully. Justin's a good kid. I can see why people like Justin. But to me, the production has not equaled the fanfare at this point. If I was, you know, just leave it there. So, sorry about that. By the way, I've heard that when I lick my fingers, people say, ah, oh, it's part of Hondo's new drinking game. Sorry, it's just what I do when I'm messing with papers. Next, Daniel M. Hey, Unc Hondo, just was wondering on your thoughts and opinions on the Raiders taking Jordan Travis later in the draft if they don't select a quarterback on day one or two. Love the podcast. Thank you. Aloha, Daniel M. Hi, aloha to you as well. Um, So let me just tell you, <clears throat> if you're not familiar uh, with Jordan Travis, I am very familiar. This kid is, again, one of those kids that when you look at at the end, I mean, you look at in the draft, you you see a lot in him. Okay, so let me give you, um, let me give you a couple of, uh, of thoughts here. He is, does not have a lot of core strength. You can tell it when he throws the ball. Now, by the way, this is not my opinion. This is talking to Scout. Okay. So that would have to be worked on at the NFL level. So he is a developmental quarterback. Make that clear. Going to have to get in the weight room with Jay Gruden and have to, I mean, his core is, is and you can just tell by his passes. Some of their passes have to come through, and it's got to come from the core of your body. Plant your foot, use your whole body, and get momentum and thrust. Um, but he's extremely elusive, very elusive. Great mobility, has a unique ability. As a matter of fact, I would say, um, I, I would not say, I was told he has a lot of, of, of um, the intangibles like a Randall Cunningham, just with his balance, his, his elusiveness. I'm not saying he's bi as big as him. I think he's only 6'1". But again, very elusive. He has very good when he rockets when, when, when he throws the ball straight line. <clears throat> um, but touch, which is where, you know, you're off balance a little bit, so you got to rely on your core to throw the ball. His touch on intermediary passes is not great. Um, you know, just launching the ball, yes. But your core, I'll give you an example. I started to say this earlier. Your legs and hips are very vital to throwing a long ball. And of course your arm, but your core is big on the touch passes. And so because his core strength's weak, he struggles with some intermediate passes and accuracy, but he can get that ball down the field. He can make those throws. He's elusive. I like him as a developmental guy. <clears throat> if I'm the Raiders and I haven't picked a quarterback yet, and we're in some later rounds, that's Jordan Travis is a guy, big upside. Now he's a guy that could come in and compete. I don't think he beats out Aiden. I don't think he'd be beat out Gardner. <clears throat> but you have him spend a year with Deuce. And you have him get stronger, work on touch. I think next year you come back, he's a guy that competes. I think he's got a future. So I'm not against that pick at all. And 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 uh, at all. I think that's a very much a guy that should be on the Raiders um radar. And I believe he is. That's a great question, by the way. Next to come to us from Matt S. in Sacramento. Sacktown. Hi, Hondo. I have an odd question. 
that I can I can't figure out. When do Coach Pierce's official wins and losses record start? Is he starting his head coaching career five and four, or does he start next season zero and zero? Thanks, Hondo. Just win, Matt S. in Sacktown. Okay, so his record's five and four, and he'll be moving forward. Now, as you know, I give coaches a ton of grace for their first 20 games. And I've answered this, and I've had some people in – Matt, I think it was Matt. Yeah, Matt. I had some people who who have asked your question similarly. Sim, similarly. He's a Pete. It's early. Um, so let me say this to you. His record is five and four going into the year, but he didn't have OTAs, didn't have mini camp, didn't have training camp, no trading deadline, down two offensive coaches, and oh by the way, none of it was his. So for my twenty games, it starts next year, week one, and dear God, I hope it's in Kansas City. Please, anyways. Um, but regardless, his record starts at five and four. Okay. There you go. Next, Jason Beaver in Portland, Oregon. <clears throat> I love Oregon. What a gorgeous state. Hondo, I was, I love the beauty of Oregon. I was hoping you could outline the process when free agents come to visit. If a prospective Raider leaves without a deal, will they have their agent report back to the Raiders on what the, a deal they are considering? so that the Raiders can respond uh, potentially, sweeten the pot, or are they uh, pretty much out of it, out of luck if they don't sign them when they still in the building? This is Jason uh, Beaver in Portland, Oregon. Great question, Jason. There are a lot of different scenarios here in your question, so let me explain it, okay? Do you remember earlier, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm cognizant of the drinking game, do you remember earlier I talked about the Raiders are looking for players that are relevant? Remember, relevant is for a word that was part of the drinking game. And they're also going to be um, disciplined in their spending, but not bargain shoppers. <laughs> you guys make me laugh. Okay, so they brought guys in. And made them offers, and they went and shopped. Right, Jenkins went and took a visit to Miami, and you know Adam Butler talked to some teams. Harrison Bryant talked to some teams, knew what the Raiders were offering. So there's in most cases the Raiders are like, hey, this is the offer, or they want to wait till they come in, meet with them, make sure everything gels, maybe find out some medical information, and then make an offer. Usually when they make their offer the way Telesco operates, there isn't a ton of negotiation because the, the, the Raiders are disciplined but not bargain shoppers. So if a guy's worth 10, they're going to offer him 10. And they're not going to try to offer him nine and go, and, and go uh, bargain shopping. Almost caught myself. And then, but they're also not going to offer 11 because they're disciplined. So sometimes they get the offer when they come in. Maybe they're waiting on some more information. Sometimes they already have it. But this stage in free agency, everyone pretty much knows what they've offered. There's a couple of offers on the table. And you know what? If you decide you want to be here and this is what we're willing to pay, well, we'd like you. So that's kind of where it goes. Now, there are some cases where they determine Christian Wilkins is worth every penny. And Christian Wilkins bet on himself. The Dolphins offered him a lot of money last year. He says, no, I want to go test free agency. I think I'm worth more. He gets out on the market, and he was worth more to the Raiders. That's why he signed so quickly, because there was nobody's offer. I mean, the Raiders went out and paid him exactly what they thought that he was worth, and it was a ton of money. There were people that wanted him on the cheap. There were people, I wasn't referring to the Raiders when I used that drinking game word. Um, there were some people that made him offers on the bargain pricing. And there were some that, you know, thought he was valuable, but not as valuable as the Raiders. 
So I wish I could say there was one answer here. Now, I want to use Andre Simmons as an example. So the Raiders knew, made an offer and kind of knew what they thought he was worth. However, <clears throat> as the process went on and nobody tampered, they realized there's going to be a massive market for Andre James. Now, I know that that makes a lot of Raider fans who don't like Andre. What are you talking about? I'm sorry. There was going to be, a, I personally know, I think seven, it may have even been eight that team, and that doesn't count the ones I don't know who are interested in Andre. And um, so they're like, okay, all of these teams want him. Maybe we have need to go back and sharpen our pencils and look at our offer. And when they looked at it, they're like, yeah, we, we're going to probably need to up this. And, and and they did. Andre signed before free agency even started because he wanted to be there. So, again, that's kind of sometimes offers get changed. Not very often, but they do in, in the way that Telesco operates. But um, it, it varies. So I, I understand I just gave you three different answers. Sometimes they have offer before. Sometimes they get it when they get here. Sometimes they get here, don't get an offer. Sometimes an offer is raised. I mean, I, I understand I just gave you a bunch of them, but there's there is there's no static line here. There's all different scenarios. I hope that answers your question effectively, Jason. Thank you so much. Next, Brenton, Brenton M. Dear Hondo, there are three people uh, whose word and opinion are worth their weight in gold to me. Jesus, my lovely wife, and Hondo Carpenter. If you run for mayor, then my wife and I are moving to Las Vegas so we can vote for you. As for my question, how does the team feel about Tra Trayvon Morig and Nate Hobbs at this point? Do you feel like the Raiders have them in the long-term plan, or will they be looking for other options when their rookie deals are up? Brenton M. First of all, great question. Second of all, I'm not running for mayor. I'm not a politician in the least bit. Now, let's get to this. Um, Trayvon has shown flashes. Um, the first year under the old regime and the old defensive back coaching, who I've been asked not to name, no need throwing anybody more under the bus. He went backwards, came back a little bit. I thought he was much better last year like he was in 22. So, yeah, I think this is a monster year for him. Nate Hobbs, he's going to get re-signed. Do I think there's a chance Trayvon gets re-signed? Uh-huh, but I think he needs to have a good year. He needs to have a good year. But, yes, I think – um, I think that, uh, uh, Nate for sure. I think Trayvon, although I'm not as sure, but I do think it would behoove them to add a safety. So there you go. Great question, by the way. Next one comes in and says, uncle Hondo, I know you've talked a lot about some of the quarterbacks such as Penix and Bo Nix and others. But wouldn't it be better to draft them at the bottom of the first round and have a fifth-year option than to pick them in the second? And that comes to us from Trent Disick or Disick. Trent Disick or Trent Disick. Trent, um, okay, here's the problem, though. Remember I talked about good teams don't waste first-round picks, okay? And so if you know a guy is developmental, What's a fifth-year option if you have to overpay him and he doesn't hit? I just think you have to show the restraint. Yes, if you got a guy and you're down there and you think, okay, this is our future guy. He's not ready right now. He's two years away. Remember, uh, like uh, Patrick Mahomes wasn't asked to play right away. Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying Aaron was a developmental nor Patrick. I, I don't know those teams' scouting reports at the time. Well, I do know Kansas City's. But – um. But if you think, okay, that is our guy, like Jordan Love, Green Bay, that's our guy. That's our long-term guy. We got to develop him, but that's our guy. Then, yes, you move up. If that's how the Raiders feel, if they're, think, if they're like, listen, we don't want to take Penix 
early, but we are convinced that injuries were just a fluke. That's our guy. We got to develop him. We got to get him stronger. But yep, yeah, we know that's our guy. Then you move up into the bottom of the first round. So I hope that answers your question. Dylan G, Uncle Hondo. I feel like I'm the only person saying safety is a need considering both of our current starters and going to need extended uh, are going to need to be extended in the future. I live in Utah and follow uh, the Utes closely. You should. Kyle Whittingham, in my opinion, is the most underrated coach in all of college football. I know the ton of respect the NFL has for him. That guy's had multiple job offers at massive schools. Not interested. Kyle Winningham is one of a handful of college coaches that I would let my kid play for any day of the week. What a great guy. What a great program. He develops great players. What's your opinion, and have you heard any interest from the Raiders about Cole Bishop? First of all, you're right. The Raiders do need to add a safety, but don't forget Chris Smith. I realize you didn't see a ton last year. Where they picked him is why they picked him. He's a developmental guy, but I think he is going to be really, really good. I thought Marcus Epps played super well. Um, again, I talked about this extensively last year. He wasn't – people say, well, I didn't see en enough stats from Marcus Epps. He's the quarterback of the defensive backfield. You saw Jones. You saw Hobbs. You saw a lot of good stuff, and that was Epps putting guys in the right spot. I think Epps had an underrated good year last year, and I think that they agree with me. Um, but still, safety is a, a place of need. So I want to talk to you because he just asked me uh, about Cole Bishop. So I love Cole Bishop. I don't like the kid. I love everything about Cole Bishop. So let me tell you about this kid because – Maybe you're on the East Coast and you don't watch any Utes games, or maybe you only watch bigger schools and you're not, you know, maybe you're just watching the game of the week. You're not necessarily watching. So Cole Bishop has, he's a safety with corner speed. The kid is just lightning quick. He is super aggressive. Kid has no fear. He will put his nose. I mean, he is a quintessential Raider. He's a stone cold killer. But sometimes your biggest strength is your biggest weakness. So let me explain. Sometimes he's overly aggressive. And so guys will get behind him because he's coming up to play the run. And he trusts his speed. So, okay, he's over aggressive. Well, play's going behind me and he's able to catch up when it's a normal receiver. But against elite receivers, NFL, and everybody in the NFL is elite. That speed is going to hurt him because he's so aggressive. The other one is, is he's so fast that sometimes when he comes up to make hits, his tackling is not technique. Now, in college, you can get away with that because for every elite safety, you're going against 90% of the receivers, 95 are not elite receivers. So you hit them and they go down. That's a concern with him is because you may have speed and fly up to catch Jacoby Myers, but Jacoby Myers is a seasoned vet. And when it's just speed on speed, he knows how to sideswipe you. And if your tackling technique is not perfect, listen, would I love the Raiders to get Cole Bishop? Yes. I think somebody may take him earlier than where his developmental slot is. But if, 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 and that's why there are just dumb teams who draft dumb. They pick guys at the wrong spots. And yes, occasionally they hit, but they fail more than they hit. That's why they're bad teams. If you can get him at the appropriate spot, you nail it, just bam, grab Cole Bishop. Legit player. Absolutely legit player. Love everything about his game. Um, next comes from Gerald E. Hello, Uncle Hondo. I'm writing you from a small country in Central America, El Salvador. Of course I know where El Salvador is. My question is, if the Raiders decided to pick a lefty quarterback like Michael Penix, 
is there any chance to see Colton move to right tackle to have an elite blindside tackle and insert for left tackle? But she looked really good in the games. He, uh, his number was called. Thank you for a great time, Gerald E. First of all, Joe, great to hear from you. Uh, I was just on a national interview the other day talking about how big Raider Nation is, how mammoth Raider Nation is. And uh, I get emails all the time from people out of the country. Here you are in El Salvador. Great to hear from you. I love to hear from people outside the country. So if you email me and you're not from America, make sure you put that in there. Um, so could that happen? Yes. But Colton is an elite left tackle. So then I think if you go get a lefty, could you move him over there? You could. And do I think Colton could do it? Yes. Or do you just go draft an elite right tackle like a J.C. Latham? And there are others. I'm just using him as an example. I mean, he's the best right tackle in this draft. There are some guys who are significantly uh, better left tackles. He's significantly a better right tackle, and he can play guard. He offers a really good mix. Um, but then there are some guys that I know that were worked out who are some high-end left tackles that after working out um, some senior stuff, and, and they think they could make the transition to right with no problem. So, yeah, is that a possibility? Yes. I don't know that I would call it a probability, but certainly a possibility. But – I do agree with you. Thayer looked very, very good playing for Colton last year. They want him to beat out or Jermaine. He didn't. But when he played right, he looked fine. When he played left, he looked fine. I think Colton's got a big future. I know there are some who think you put Colton at right tackle, and if the season started today, they would. There are some that think you go draft a Latham, and then you got Thayer as your flex tackle. I can see that as well too, but uh, I, I'm I'm a buyer on Thayer. They stole him in the seventh round. Just stole him. Good to talk to you, Gerald. Next, this comes from Matthew P. Hondo. We saw Malcolm take a massive step in his development last season. Talk about Malcolm Coons. <clears throat> Who are some players you see primed for similar jumps in their careers? Tyree Wilson, I would imagine, is one. Love the work and dedication you have for concerning the franchise. I know this is not the team you support, as you let us know all the time, but you have been a fantastic addition to coverage uh, to coverage staff. And I just wanted to thank you for your uh, for the volume of information and content that you produce. First of all, thank you, Matt. I appreciate or Matthew, excuse me. I appreciate that very much. Um, you're right. I'm not a fan, and in a minute, you're going to understand why I'm not and why I say it all the time. I know that annoys people, but you'll understand in a minute. Um, I don't really have a team I support. I have friends that are part of every team in the National Football League. Now, there's one team I don't really – I have a, a minor connection, but not a big one. But all the rest I have from a reasonable connection to a huge connection. Um. But just because I'm not a fan doesn't mean that I want the Raiders to do poorly. So that's a big one, and I'm glad that you recognize this. So anyways, you talked about Malcolm Coons, who took a big step last year. Who are some guys? I think this is a year Trayvon Moore has to. Has to. Um, he's there. Tyree Wilson, I thought, took a massive step last year considering he wasn't even healthy. So he's a guy I expect to continue to grow. Dillard and Parham is the most underrated player on the team. That guy's just Mr. Reliability. I'm a huge Parham guy. I think he could be the next start shell. Huge fan. Okay. Aiden. I want to see Aiden. Trey Tucker. Michael Mayer. There's a bunch of them. A bunch of them. Now, most of those guys are much younger, where Koontz wasn't. He'd been in a few leagues. Those guys are just coming off rookie season. But I have humongous expectations for those every one of those guys I just mentioned for next year. All right, next. Uh, from Raul S. Hondo, how can you be a fan of the Raiders and then talk about trading guys? 
You're the worst fan ever. Live or die, Raider Nation till we die, my Joe. I don't know what my Joe means, but okay. Um, Raul, okay. I can talk about training guys because, Raul, I have to look at the team. Um, I I'm looking at it analytically. I'm not looking at it like a fan. Tom Telesco works for the Raiders, get paid by the Raiders. He can't look at this team like a fan. Antonio Pierce can, because those are his guys. He's got to believe in those guys. Got to go to war with those guys. And I, I hate to use the term war when it comes to football. I want to apologize about that. My father was a warrior. Um, I have so much immense respect for the men and women who are in our military. And I don't want to make light of, of that. So that was a wrong term. I apologize about that. But they, 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 they fight with those guys. So I get that. I understand that. But it doesn't matter. If you think I'm a bad journalist because I'm talking about trading people, Raul, I I respect you, but this is why I would say to you, maybe you're new and don't know, but I, I'm very emphatic. I'm not a fan because I want people like you to understand when I say things, I'm not coming from a fan perspective. And so I understand it irritates people that I say it a lot, but please understand with a growing audience I want people to understand where my uh, analysis comes from, from what is my POV point of view of being analytical. So I, I hope that makes sense, Raul, and I appreciate you. And again, uh, I know you said um, you are the worst fan ever. That makes me feel good because I'm not a fan. So again, I don't think you meant it being a jerk. I'm not implying that. Just want you to understand. And I don't know what my Joe meant, so I apologize. Um, this next one says, I work currently as a creative coordinator at a creative studio and as a producer for a podcasting network here in Los Angeles. Um, I'd love a chance to work with you or to chat with you. Appreciate you, Hondo. Have a great week. And that's from Matthew P. Thanks, Matthew. That's very, very kind of you. I appreciate you and all the people who work in our in our business of disseminating information whatever that is you work very very hard thank you remember you can send me your emails and questions maybe they'll get on in the soon upcoming podcast when you go to spartan nation mail m-a-i-l at yahoo.com also additionally follow me on ig when you go to hondo sr on x formerly known as twitter at hondo carpenter and remember we're doing some great upgrades to our si website some really awesome services are coming so we're going through a teeny, teeny bit of a transition period. Be a little bit patient with us, but we're grateful for you. Remember, si.com forward slash NFL forward slash Raiders is where you go. And then um, also, I'm going to be leaving in just a minute to head to the owner's meetings. I'll be in the owner's meetings this week in Orlando. Looking forward to bringing you tons of great information there. So from all of us to all of you, thank you for liking, sharing, um, subscribing hitting the notification button. Um, I learned yesterday that I guess that's super important. So every time there's a new video, you get a uh, notification of it. But go there, check all that out, and appreciate all of you. Remember, don't spam us, but get your questions in. I love to answer them, and I love to give you the best information that I can. So from all of us here at Sports Illustrated's uh, Las Vegas Raiders coverage. I'm your beat writer, Hondo Carpenter. Thanks for being with us, everybody. God bless you. See you tomorrow from Orlando. Hopefully I'll get a, at least one chance to do some fishing this week. See you all later. It'd be nice if I could learn how to turn this thing off. Makes me look stupid every time. Let's try it again. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>